Hi everyone, my name is Peyton and in this video I want to go over the landscape tool inside of Unreal Engine 5. Uh, this is a beginner setup video just kind of covering how to actually uh, get one into your scene and setting it up and all. Um, it's not really any different from uh, Unreal Engine 4. Uh, there's maybe some UI changes and stuff and uh, some updates, but overall if you've used it before in Unreal Engine 4, uh, you should be pretty familiar with it and uh, pretty much yeah, be able to not have any issues kind of working with it. Um, but I wanted to start in our level here, and of course we have this flat piece of uh, geometry. Um, you can, of course, like build your landscape or so with geometry being brought in from a modeling uh, software if you wanted to. Uh, but sometimes it's nice to actually be able to sculpt it real time and uh, kind of control it a lot more inside of the engine. Uh, and then also that can help you yeah, if you're making a much larger map or uh, kind of space. Uh, it's kind of hard to work with the um, salt or like with a, a model or so that you brought in. And this allows you to yeah, be able to have that customization in the engine itself. So what I'm going to do first is I am actually going to uh, go ahead and just delete this. Um, and I want to go up to select mode right here. And then I'm going to switch over to landscape mode. So I'm going to click that. And you'll see um, we're going to get this grid here. And so this is by default uh, over here. Now we have our landscape uh, window and we are creating a new landscape. And by default, it's already kind of thrown out this uh, landscape that we have kind of um, it's a preview of it, like how uh, dense it would be, how large it would be and so forth. Um, now, of course, like there are like the button down here where it says fill world, you can fill the world uh, itself. And so it makes a much larger landscape, uh, but that's pretty expensive. So let's say that we're just making like a, a map or uh, like a little nature area that we want. Um, so I think, yeah, we want to kind of keep it within these restraints. Now going through here, uh, of course, there's a couple of things. So there's the uh, location. If you want to place a uh, landscape material on it, uh, we can do that after we actually make the landscape and that should be fine. Uh, that way we can like vertex paint and everything. Um, but you can also yeah, go down here, see layers, location. Um, this is kind of just the yeah uh, transform of the actual landscape itself. Um, and then there's the actual section size sections per component and a uh, number of landscape components. So this is where your resolutions can kind of change. You can see uh, right now it's 63 by 63 quads. Uh, if I change it to 7 by 7, it gets much smaller. Um, and so the density of it itself is going to be uh, kind of uh, based off of this. So yeah, this is getting a lot more intense. But you could pretty much, uh, like if you want it to be denser, we could have 255 by 255 and then drop this down to uh, two um, components. And we can see uh, that, yeah, it's just two different um, actual, like, these are what's going to be able to be editable as well afterwards. Um, so what I would say is I just want to show the default. So something like this, uh, that way we can control a little bit more. Um, and then, yeah, there's the overall resolution as well that you can change. But I'm going to run with these settings and hit create. So it's going to take a second just to import the landscape. Um, but then after that, we'll then be able to actually sculpt with it uh, with our, our tools and all. Um, so now we have our landscape. So this is pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and actually just throw on a, a plain material. This is uh, not one that... Uh, we actually will use in the end, um, but I think it could be nice just for sculpting purposes at all. Uh, let's say I can try the, that'll take a second. Yeah, so I think maybe not using super white material just because it'll be a little bit harder to see the um, like changes and everything of elevation. So I'm going with this grayer kind of flat uh, matte material that I have. And now I can go back over to the landscape and we have our brush. So this is similar to vertex painting or whatever, but the thing is it's actually going to um, affect your height, of course. So we can see here that now um, this is the manage tool and then there's the sculpt tool and then the paint tool. 
Uh, so those are kind of the three different like attributes to the landscape itself. Um, if you get into the manage tool and let's say that now that we have our, our things set up, we can go in and actually click these if we want and you can delete them and so forth or even add uh, like, um, yeah, basically kind of manage as it says uh, the, the different components of the landscape. Um, but I typically do that after I've sculpted a little bit. So I'm going to go back over here and do some sculpting. So. Yeah, I'm going to change my uh, tool strength, then probably my brush size as well. And let's say that I wanted to, um, you know, start painting. You can see that it's actually already like deforming the uh, the ground and everything. Um, of course, like I said, tool strength is going to affect that. Then there's different brush types as well. So there's some different shapes here, um, brush fall off. So the intensity of the edges and how that kind of works, like how it's going to pinch. You can see that's going to plateau a little bit more to where we get um, those edges. So yeah, there's a variety of ways you can kind of go about doing this, but uh, I'm going to just start with the, yeah, the basic one. And then I'm going to go over here and let's say that, yeah, I wanted like kind of a, a valley uh, going through here, like maybe a river or something. Um, generally what I will do is I want to also not just necessarily like, you know, cut it out and then just do something like this um, with it. Instead, I want to actually like look at the overall form of the space and so like think about with erosion and so forth if you are going to be sculpting it with landscape uh, you don't want to necessarily just like try to sculpt that immediate erosion first you want to look at the macro shapes first so typically like if there is a small like river or stream running it's probably coming down a hill so maybe it would make more sense if i started to make a hill first um and yeah i think my tool strength might be a little strong but I could basically put a couple of like uh, little hills around here um, and keep the area that I'm in uh, like pretty gentle, I would say. And so now we're getting yeah something more along the lines of this. Of course, it might be too big for our character and all, um, which might be nice to actually throw a character in here. But I think that yes, yeah, not working too bad. So uh, now I'm going to change the brush size. And now that I have that hill, I'm going to look at the, the more um, medium size shapes, you know? Um, so I'm kind of just like simplifying this down to the very basic level of like how I would think about actually uh, making this uh, pathway or so. Um, and so now that I have that, I'm going to have my tool strength pretty low and I'm going to come back and maybe uh, just kind of tap around. Um, now you'll notice that this is actually eating into the landscape instead of, um, you know, popping up. So, uh, it's, uh, going the opposite of what we just did. And that's cause I'm holding shift. So it's a really easy way to, uh, kind of switch between like whether it's going up or it's going down into the, uh, the landscape itself. So, um, but yeah, I can, you know, start to work with, maybe I want this to kind of fall back there and, um, kind of have, yeah, like a, a turn that's happening or something. And then, and then I could come in a little bit more, uh, if I wanted like, a some ridges here or so, um, if I wanted this side a little bit taller and then I could jump down to an even smaller brush size. And I can, yeah, really start to carve out like the, the pathway that I, I wanted additionally. So there we go. Um, and I'll show a couple of other like tools as well. So, uh, there's the smoothest, of course. So like this is after I've maybe been a bit aggressive, I can come through and actually smooth it out a bit. Um, if I want to like put some, maybe a mod kit or something and want like a really flat space to where it's not like weird, 
uh, I can use the flatten tool and this will basically make uh, everything the same elevation height. So this can be nice, like I said, uh, let's say that I wanted like a road that kind of comes through here. Uh, in the real world, they would actually like, yeah, flatten the elevation to where it, it worked properly. So this can be a nice way to get that same effect where like the road would probably run through here and cut through um, the space a bit. And so, yeah, that way you have uh, that sort of same effect without um, having to, you know, actually work with just the sculpting and smoothing um, like tools. Uh, and then of course there's ramp. So if uh, you want like a specific ramp in one place, that's good. Um, there's thermal erosion. Um, so this can be nice if you want to play around with uh, some actual like erosion techniques and stuff. Um, and it kind of simulates the erosion um, like with higher and lower areas. I uh, haven't used it a ton, but um, yeah, I think it can be pretty nice to uh, get some of that effect as well. Uh, and then there's hydro, which is going to be like rainfall with the, the erosion, um, noise, and then there's uh, retopo, and then yeah, visibility, mirror, so forth. So um, basically just wanted to show the, the simple sculpting one for this video. I didn't want to dive too much further into a lot of the other stuff. Um, I think that could come at a, a later time if anyone's interested. But uh, one other thing I wanted to jump over to is now that we have our uh, landscape, let's say that we have this little space here, we have a lot of unnecessary you know, area. So you can go over here to the manage, like I was saying, and I could select like all of these back here if I wanted to and um, basically delete them. So accidentally hit the delete button. Um, so, oh wait. There we go, click on that. Um, so yeah, manage, and then I'm going to uh, select these, and you can actually yeah delete them. So I can click through here and just delete the ones that aren't even in my space. And that can be a little bit uh, easier on um, just the cost, your frame rate and everything for your space. Uh, if it's areas that we yeah, don't really need, um, but I tend to wait till like I really know the space that I'm working with and then I'll do that. But as you can see, that really didn't like I might need to bring this up a little bit to where I can't see that way. Uh, but that wasn't too much drastic differences by getting rid of those back areas that we couldn't see. Um, so, yeah, delete that. And now we have that space. So what I'm going to do now is want to go over here. And I want to actually yeah, set up a landscape material real quick. Um, so I'm going to right click and go to materials. And I'm just going to uh, pretty simply yeah, make a uh, material itself. I'm going to name it uh, ground, uh, let's see, material. There we go. And now that we are in our ground material, what I want to do is I'm just going to set up a very simple, like two different colors. That way we can see the uh, transition. Um, so I'm going to hold three real quick and make two uh, constants. So I'm going to drag this out uh, real quick first. I will change it to a greenish color. That way that's our grass. And then I want to change this one to maybe a brownish color um, or tan. Uh, so it's like our dirt basically. And then what I want to do is I'm going to right click and I want to do a landscape layer blend. So um, typing that in and here we go. We have our layer blend. And so what I want to do now is uh, once I've selected my layer blend over here, you'll see array elements. So I want to um, add an element and I'm going to add two different elements here. So now that we have that, we see layer none, layer none. Those are the two input spots. And under here, I can name this one, uh, let's see, dirt. And then I can name this other one grass. And you can see that it's updating there. Um, and this is kind of the, yeah, some of the constraints and stuff uh, for that. But I'm just going to plug in my dirt and my grass and then plug that into the base color. And then I can hit uh, save. 
So yeah, this is super basic just for the landscape. Of course, you can use like elevation and stuff as well to kind of control like where it's being added uh, with your height map. But I just want to show like how you can actually just paint um, in here. But uh, I'm going to close this real quick. And I want to uh, select my landscape that we have now in our level, drag in my new uh, ground material, and we can see that it is uh, showing up right here as, um, yeah, just dark toned. And I'm going to go over to my landscape tool again and go to paint. Um, and now I have my dirt and my grass. So, and I'm just going to uh, create the layer info. So I'm going to turn that with the weight blended layer um, and then yeah save and then I'm gonna do the same with my grass so save there um, and so now that you can see that uh, it has filled in with the dirt uh, first we could of course switch that uh, where if we wanted like grass to be everywhere um, that would be kind of that priority but now that we have the dirt everywhere, you can see um, what I can do is paint in um, the grass by selecting it. So I can go over here with the brush size and it'll take a second uh, just for it to compile um, because it's uh, was preparing the shaders. But now I can actually paint in my uh, grass material and place it yeah, throughout the areas where I want grass to kind of show up um, and so forth. So. Uh, it really depends, I would say, like whichever material you feel is going to be more abundant in your space. Uh, so technically, the grass would potentially be more abundant in this one just because of the hills and stuff. Um, then you might want to have that as the kind of the priority material, um, the one that's uh, by default just like filled in. And then you could paint in the, uh, the actual dirt to the spaces where you want that. Um, but I think like this is yeah doing a, a pretty decent job of what we're trying to do. I'm going to take this real quick and maybe add a little bit in here. Um, yeah, I can change the tool strength and the fall off as well. Um, and even like kind of smooth it out if I feel like the edges are a bit too strong. Um, so you get that, that softer transition, which is pretty nice. Um, and a lot of the stuff that we might want to mess with, like the threshold and everything, you would want to do that in the material itself. Uh, that way you can really, yeah, work with um, those transition points. But um, as we can see here, we're starting to, yeah, pretty much get the, the look that we were wanting out of this. And pretty much the, yeah, the shapes and everything. Um, and like I said, this is a lot more just kind of basic uh, in terms of how to set it up and everything. But I think the landscape tool is great for uh, if you're wanting to pretty much have control over a large space in a scene and a large map um, and you're able to really customize it in here. Uh, if I'm doing something really small, I'll tend to just make the geometry of my ground inside of like Maya or whatever modeling software I'm using uh, externally. Um, just because I uh, tend to like using the the regular like materials um, instead of using like this uh, but I would say overall like if you are going for this this uh, a larger space the landscape materials and the landscape tool is a, a great way to really um, be able to yeah tackle that uh, look that you're kind of going for with this so um, yeah, that's about it for this video, kind of covering landscape um, and how to set one up as well as setting up a landscape material. Um, if you have any questions, of course, about this, feel free to drop them below and I will see you in the next video.